If you don't think that accessible AI is the future, then this video will probably annoy you. If you clicked on this video and you don't know what AI automation is, then let me give you some background. AI automation isn't exactly new. Artificial intelligence is used pretty much everywhere. However, up until recently, it's only been used by big corporations because only they have the budgets and the resources. These big companies would need to have an AI developed specifically for them, which is why it costs so much. However, when ChatGPT launched, and then later the GPT API, it allowed people to use the GPT framework in their own use cases. Then anyone with even a little bit of coding knowledge could make their own AI application or system. However, then as time progressed, people started to build tools where ordinary people could use the GPT framework without needing to know how to code. Then other companies started to release their own APIs and different APIs were better at different things. Soon we started getting AI image generation APIs, AI audio generation APIs, even AI voice generation APIs. There was almost a unique API launching every single hour and people using those APIs to create new tools. As an example, to make an auto captioning API, people combined a speech to text API with a captioning API like Google's video intelligence, and then lastly, a text formatting API. This auto captioning tool is now pretty much used in every single video editing software. And also in some niche softwares like auto caption generators for YouTube shorts or TikToks or whatever. However, if you're looking to get into the AI business, these AI tools are not where the money are, or the gap, so to speak. The gap is people that don't know how to use these tools or need their own versions of existing tools. Let me give you an example. So auditors aren't allowed to use ChatGPT when working with clients data because it violates client privacy policy. Ooh. So all that we did is that we took the ChatGPT framework, the GPT API, we put that into a normal chatbot and there we go. Now the auditors can use their own version of ChatGPT with its own custom data so it's more useful and it doesn't send its data back to OpenAI because it's an API. So they don't use that data to train their models. Now that you know what it is, should you get into the space? We are still in the infant years of AI and we still will be for a few years. So if you start soon and you keep at it for a few years, then you'll massively benefit from the early mover advantage. You see this concept quite clearly in the automotive industry. Volkswagen, Toyota and Honda were some of the first movers when it came to the production car. And today, unsurprisingly, they have the biggest market share. Even in cases where new players do enter the game, like in 2003 with Tesla, the new players are just better equipped logistics and budget wise. Tesla does dominate the electric car industry at the moment. However, they are a company solely focused on innovating and producing electric cars. So the large market share does make sense. However, as big car manufacturers start to turn away from petrol engines and more towards hybrid and electric vehicles, Tesla will slowly start to lose its market share until it's no longer dominant. Why? Well, simply because the bigger manufacturers are just better equipped. They have more factories, they have a bigger workforce, they have bigger brand names, they have bigger budgets. Tesla, unfortunately being so new, will eventually lose their grip on the electric car market. The same will one day happen to the AI automation business space. So it's best to start early to maximize your chances of success. Not guarantee it, just maximize it. The most common objection I hear to people not starting an AI automation business is that they don't have the knowledge in AI or coding or business or something like that. But the beauty is, is that you don't need any of it. The whole point of this AI revolution was putting the power of AI in the ordinary person's hand. Even if you don't want to start a business with it, it's fine. I sometimes build my own versions of websites or apps or tools just because it's fun. My next video is gonna be how I build a bot that can help you determine the accurate price of a second-hand vehicle. And I didn't do it for the money or that someone asked me, I just thought, you know what, that's something that I could really use and I have the skills to do it, so I'm gonna do it. The point that I'm making is that you don't have to do it for the money. Learn it because it's a skill and it will help you in your daily life. Of that I can promise you. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.